What is up, everybody? You are checking out the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, The Hot Commodity, your current WWE pay-per-view champion. Belt's nice and shiny tonight. Joining me is my co-host and friend. Introduce yourself, sir. My name is Christian, co-host here, talking about Monday Night Raw. Um, I only really enjoyed, what was it, CM Punk talking. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, other than that, it was a decent role. It was decent, yeah. I was going to say that was a very uh, impressive promo from CM Punk to kick off the name. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, <clears throat> before we go on, make sure you subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell on YouTube to stay notified when new content is created. We have so much stuff coming your way. This week, we've got AEW Dynamite recaps, AEW Grand Slam. Uh, Bad Blood in a couple of weeks. We've got, uh, I think, NXT Halloween Havoc's coming up soon. They have I'll their... Be there, it's in Hershey. That's right, he'll be there. You can give us a cool recap. I might be there, I might be there, because I might go to AEW the month after. Okay, so. well, whichever one you go to, we'll be able to do a recap, uh, and, like, your experience being there live, which is always cool to do. Um so, yeah, we've got also the NXT debuting on the CW. So that's going to be a big episode. A lot of stuff coming your way. We also have the Attitude Years. We're on Season 3. We're hitting up the Royal Rumble 2000, which is a very famous Rumble. I'm excited to watch it again. We're also available. If you don't want to listen, see us on YouTube, which why wouldn't you? But if you want to hear us like in your car, you don't want to you know get into a car accident, so you might want to listen instead of watch. Um Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and wherever you buy or get, we don't buy podcasts. Wherever you get your podcast, you don't have to buy anything here. It's free. So, WWE Monday Night Raw is live in Portland, Oregon on September 16th, 2024. This month is like flying by. It's crazy. We're already in like the third I know, week. right? Holy hell. We're about <laughs> for, I'm about to be in a, like one more week of September left. It's getting, as you get older, it, it just goes by quicker and quicker. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm in awe, so I guess I can say that. Um, we're kicking off Raw in Portland with CM Punk coming out to the arena. Um, he comes, like, he drives in. I don't know what type of car it is, but he, he shows up in his car and comes to the ring. And he has his match set with Drew McIntyre at Bad Blood. CM Punk says, when I came back, I got a mortal enemy. I feel naive that I thought this was over because I touched four corners. It should have stopped when Drew McIntyre sent me to the hospital two weeks ago, but I'm too damn stubborn. Drew's fatal mistake was not getting the job done. I have zero Hell in a Cell matches left in me. My family asked me not to do this. The angel on my shoulder begged me not to do this. Please allow me to tell you why I'm going to do this. The devil in my heart tells me the only way this ends is in hell in a cell. Drew McIntyre, I can't promise I'm going to kill you because I won't make promises I 100% can't deliver on. I do promise um, that I'm going to make you bleed and you're going to have to kill me because I'm prepared to die. If this is the end, so be it. If you're prepared for this to be the end of Drew McIntyre, then I'll see you in Hell in a Cell. So a very good promo delivered by CM Punk. He's talking about how, you know, his family begged him not to do this. Um, He's basically saying that the reason why he's doing this is I can only end here. And he's not going to kill him, but he will make him bleed, which I'm excited about because we don't see a lot of blood often on WWE. What are your thoughts on the promo, and do you think we're going to get a lot of blood come the pay-per-view bad blood? Um, Yeah, they they, they have to. The name's bad blood. I mean, I I heard Bully Ray on the Busted Open podcast say it. Like, it's literally called bad blood. Like, I don't feel like it has to be really super bloody, like, dramatic to the point, like, you know, sometimes they were in AEW, but... Uh, I, I definitely think, you know, it, there's going to be blood. This is going to be the most violent match. If, if they, look, I'll put it this way. If they main event, it's going to be a blood fest. 
And I, I hope it is because with ne- them going to Netflix, you know, they're getting ready to get more of a my age type of audience. Um, my age and like, you know, like an 18, 25, almost the unk status. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but, um, no, but seriously, they're going towards that demographic, you know, once they, you know, started going on Netflix. Um, so I, I think this is going to, you know, be a, a kick to that. They're in Atlanta. You know, there's going to be some buzz. There's going to be some famous rappers, people in the building. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be a really good. I just hope, I just hope they don't make that damn cage red. Oh, I know. It's such an eyesore. I don't think it will because I think they got rid of it last year when they did Hell in a Cell. Did they have a Hell in a Cell match last year? Uh, yeah, but I think they had it red. Oh, uh, well, hopefully, then I hope it's not red. I might be because the pay per view bad blood. Finn Balor and Edge at Mania, I think it was. Yeah, that was, but see, that was like two years ago, right? When did he fight Balor? It was last year. He fought last year, Daniel. That was in 2023. Oh, that's right, because he fought on that Hollywood, WrestleMania goes Hollywood. Yeah, that was last year. Okay. Yeah, this year's flying by. I'm, like, forgetting, like, where. Yeah, like, um, yeah it's good promo, though. I agree. I'm excited. I hope the, the cell isn't blood red. Yeah, that, like, WrestleMania last year, like, this past one. What's that? You thought I meant by WrestleMania last year, did you think I meant like this one, 40? The one that just happened? No, I li- literally forgot that they even uh, had this match. Damn. I won't forget that. Just because of Edge's entrance, I fucking loved it. Yeah. I uh, sadly forgot. Um, but something I didn't forget is our first match. Pete Dunn taking on Sheamus here. Uh, like the fifth time in a week. Like the fifth, fifth time. Week in a row. I agree. Uh, Sheamus lands an Alabama slam to Pete Dunn on the announce table. Uh, he then lands. Pete lands a sale power bomb for a two. Uh, Sheamus lands a power slam of flying knee to Dunn for a two count. Um, then Sheamus lands a super power slam for a two. Sheamus then lands seventeen beats to the Bowery, a high knee. But then Pete Dunn ends up hitting Sheamus with a cricket bat, lands a big boot, and Pete Dunn defeats Sheamus with the <clears throat> help of a weapon. What did you think of this? I mean, th- look, these guys can have all these good matches that they want. It's just really boring. I like Sheamus. I don't know why on earth he re-signed. I don't know what the hell they're going to do with him. Um Pete Dunn, I, I, he's he's doing a lot on NXT and on the main roster on Raw. It's just I just don't think they have anything, you know, planned for either of them, which is probably why they keep fucking fighting each other. Yeah, it, it really these two fighting like it's it's interesting, but if it's gonna end the same way every time, it's it's not that interesting anymore. Yeah. Um, we see Jay Uso, Rhea Ripley, and Damian Priest talking backstage. Jay tells Priest he will watch his back, and then Wood shows up and asks them to stay backstage during their match against the Judgment Day, and Rhea um, ends up yeeting Jay Uso. So we're starting to see a little relationship starting here between Rhea stupid. and Jay. I hate it. I hate it. We'll talk about it. Uh, next, we see The Miz talking to Braun Strowman backstage. He wishes Braun luck, and then he asks Braun why he said he was no match for... Um, Bronson Reed. And then Braun says, sometimes it takes a monster to beat a monster. And Miz goes, yeah, you're right. I'm not a monster. And immediately um, I was thinking that this is going to be a heel turn uh, because Miz could be a monster, a monster heel if he wants to be. Um, I don't think it would be good to have him involved in this, but it just didn't make sense why they would have this without him having some meaning behind it. I agree. I think the Miz is going to turn. Uh, next, we see Natalia with Zelina Vega and Lyra Valkyria defeating Zoe Stark with the studs. And uh, Natalia rolls up Zoe to get the Lesbos. The Lesbos. Uh, Natalia gets a roll of victory here over on Zoe. I'm happy Natalia's back. She's 
a favorite of mine, a favorite of yours. Twitter, I'll never stop saying that. A favorite of everybody's, Natalia. She's like America's, you know, one of Canadians' greatest export, even though that's Trish Stratton. You know, there's millions and millions of people. I want to hold on. I'm going to see how many how many people Natalia is following on Twitter. You are so happy that Natalia follows you. It's great. Natalia is following Natalie thousand people on Twitter, and I happen to be one of those twelve thousand people. She obviously, you know, feels I, I'm important, so I will always support everything that I do. I'm important. You made yeah, that is awesome. That was like, hey, I have thank seen, you like no, because I have, I have, she's said she sent me a heart. She I, sent me heart. She sent me heart. I, know, she, I, said, I said, I commented on her one picture. I was like, now nah, I, I have the receipts. I'll post it up on, I'll clip this when I'm unbanned on Twitter in three days and I'll post it. But when I'm banned. I appreciate Wait a minute. What's your name again? Brandon? Robert Rob Cruz. Robert, that was the name. I, I went on Twitter one day. Full disclosure, this is not about Raw. I go on Twitter one day, and I'm like, who the fuck is this? And then I'm like, wait a minute. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was just like, I guess I'm going to rock with it and not even say anything. Um, Yeah. No, because <laughs> I, I will tell you off air why my name is that. Okay. Uh, So Natalia likes, but see, here's the thing. You just messed up. You just messed things up, dude. Because if Natalia follows you, she's not gonna know your name. I rechange it. What? I might. I'm, I might rechange it. You. She's gonna be confused. She's gonna say, "Wait a minute. His name is Chris, or is it Robert? Chris Rob." Um, I love it. Anyways, we're about to like have to take our first break, but um, uh, we'll keep talking shenanigans until our break. Um. I feel like Natalia is great. She, you know, brings something they're just, a lot of time. They're just not going to do anything with her, which sucks. It does suck. They need to create a mid card title. Let her win it. I just I think it first. I agree. Yeah, I think that that's her job right now. I mean, that's her job from the beginning, though. Like, poor Natalia has always had to, had to elevate other people. Like, I remember that's her being upset. Don't do it for her, and it sucks. This has been happening at least 10 years because on Total Divas in 2013, she's complaining because she's not. Yeah. You know, it's like this poor girl. Like, give give Natalie a chance. I agree. One Wait, it's Natalia. It's, yeah, Natalia. Um, Natty Major. Natty. We have time. We'll cover this part. Um, Rhea Ripley's backstage. Finn Balor interrupts her. Finn says, I really feel like you're just as bad as Damian Priest. You acted like you cared, but all you cared about was yourself. You and Damian Priest are the reason I wasn't champion last year. Rhea says, don't try to rewrite history. We oh, we were a family. I love my family. But if you want to make us bad guys at Bad Blood, you'll see how bad we truly can be. And then Finn says, I was the devil that told Dominic to get with Liv and get rid of you. And then Jay Uso shows up and Finn backs off. We called it weeks ago, months ago, that Finn was doing something, planting seeds. You know, he was telling where Liv was, stuff, you know, the poster with the broken signs that he wasn't messed up. Um, but what do you think of this reveal here that Finn Balor was the one that was getting Liv to go with Dom? Uh, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Knew that? We know. We so know. nothing new there. Well, we're going to take our first break, and when we come back, we're going to cover the rest of the show. We've got Braun Strowman versus Bronson Reed, the Tag Champions of Judgment Day versus The New Day, and much more coming your way. So we will be right back. Stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. I'm still the hot commodity, the WWE pay-per-view champion, along with my good friend, do yourself, sir. So, Chris, I'm sorry I'm trying to fix my audio. That's all right, man. Take it. It's all good. We're still here covering Raw. Um, the next segment we're going to talk about, Jay Uso comes out to the ring. Jay says, next week I get to become Intercontinental Champion. I will finally be main event Jay Uso. 
uh, Intercollege champion Braun Breaker interrupts Jay. Breaker says, here you are with your relentless pursuit for my title. You want to prove that you don't need your family's help to make it here. You've been here for 14 years. They love you. I managed to do more as a single star in six months than your entire career. I don't need my family's name. This title is what I fight for. I'm a dog. It's what I do. Next Monday, I'm going to expose you. You're nothing without your family. Jay says, I see it in you. You got that dog in you. I won't take you lightly. I've been winning titles while you were in diapers. I'm going to dog walk your ass next week. This title run is going to be short and sweet, just like your NFL career. And then Braun attacks Jay, but then Jay is able to land a spear on the Intercontinental Champion. What did you think of this promo? I mean, Jay kind of played him. You know, his NFL career was along. He says that his title is going to be short just like that. So what are your thoughts? It was a good promo. I am rooting for Jey Uso. Um, I don't think he's going to win badly, and I hate saying it because I think he should have had his time already. But mm-hmm. I don't like him getting thrown into this Rhea bullshit. So just like Rikishi said on his podcast. So I really hope, you know, he wins his Intercontinental Championship and, you know, does something – in a singles run by himself, becomes a champion, not Gia, like the fucking retarded fans like to call it. I get it. I think um, it's a little interesting just because she's kind of on her own. But I do agree. There's really no reason for him to join her. Um, but they're they're. I see what they're setting up here. We have the World Tag Team Championships on the line. The champions of Judgment Day defending against the New Day. Um, Xavier Woods and Kofi have control for the majority of the match. Judgment Day then come out, but LWO takes out the Judgment Day. This distraction leads Finn Balor to land a coup de grace onto Xavier Woods, and the Judgment Day get the win. After the match, Xavier Woods yells at Kofi Kingston every time he says he's pissed. Um, we then see Xavier Woods yelling at LWO backstage. Kofi tells Woods that he asked them to have their back tonight. He says, we need help because we had E. And then Xavier says, now it's just you and me. And then Xavier says, why does the LWO know the plan and I don't? I'm tired of being left in the dark. So we're definitely going to get a turn here from Xavier Woods, which kind of does make sense. Kofi didn't share with his partner the plan. Um, mm-hmm. Kobe's been acting kind of weird since that whole stupid Odyssey Jones thing. But uh, I would like to see a heel Xavier Woods, you know. It would be interesting. I, don't think, I still don't think it's going to be interesting. Yeah? No. They've been I together mean, for 10 years. I know. I, I think they're both washed, and I hate to say it because I like Kofi, but... Nothing, no, there's nothing in their careers... There's nothing now, you know, that, that will mean anything. I mean, no one seems to care as much about them, you know, yeah. maybe as, as they used to. I get it. They've gotten stale, but this might be something that will change it. Maybe if Xavier Woods brutally takes out Kofi, people will be like, okay, it's something, I don't know. I, I know it's not different, but I, I kind of have hope I want to, I guess. Um, just because I've been waiting for him, for New Day to split up for so long that I'm just like, Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, we get a QR code from the Wyatt Six, and there's two entries. One talks about a girl saying basically something about she. People are assuming it's Alexa Bliss, and uh, we're getting more stuff, which I like. I like the QR codes. I think it's fun to go take the picture on the phone, do all that cool stuff. Um, but I'm I'm excited to see what's going to play out and what's going to happen with this whole Wyatt Six QR code stuff. Next up, we have a rematch, Braun Strowman versus Bronson Reed. Uh, Bronson Reed accidentally runs into the post, breaking it. Uh, They then fight to the backstage um, area, and Bronson Reed tsunamis Braun Strowman through a table, and then Braun spears Bronson Reed through a wall, and these men are laid out. No contest. Just two monsters 
going at it like they're inside New York City tearing it down. What do you think? I didn't think it was a bad match. You know, too, it wasn't just a squash match for Bronson Reed like all of his matches are. Yeah. Um, I enjoy it. Two big hitting dudes going at it. They, you know, they did a couple stunts, but it was it, it worked out because you know they're big and we don't see a lot a lot from you know guys this size. So mm -hmm. I was okay that they did stuff like that. So it was good. It was good. Good. I'm glad. I enjoyed it too. I thought it was good. These two guys killed it. I'm excited to see what's next. Uh, we have Sami Zayn coming out to the ring. Sami says, I know I'm in the ring, but all week I got to be with Brett the Hitman Hart in the oh. everything last week. Don't hate on the Hitman. Oh. Sean's all better. Fuck Sean. Sean's a pussy. Um, Brett acts like a pussy too sometimes, though, I will say. Um, anyways. Bro, Hart's a better old man. Uh, Sam, I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. Sammy says, I met him <laughs> last week. I listened to Bret Hart talk about what it meant to be a champion. I want that to be me. I want to defend the title week in and week out. Sadly, our current champion has declined every time I challenged him. He says I'm not on his level. I don't believe that, and he doesn't either. I'm in his head. He remembers WrestleMania, and he knows if we fight again, I can beat him again. He's scared. That's when Ludwig Kaiser comes out. Kaiser says, what are you doing out of everyone? Why you? Gunther's scared of you. Why would he be? He's the most dominant force in WWE now. He wants to save you from embarrassment. Uh, WrestleMania was the greatest night of your career. You smiled at your family and they looked up to you. But it's not going to happen ever again. Sammy says, Gunther doesn't need you for anything. I don't think you need him either. You're looking to stand on your own two feet and prove yourself. You think you're going to earn respect by being Gunther's mouthpiece? Have the balls to speak for yourself. And then Kaiser's about to talk, but then world champion Gunther comes out. Gunther says, if you have something to say, um, Ludwig, say it. And then Ludwig attacks Sammy. He lands a DET and then holds Sammy so Gunther could shit talk on Gunther. The Sammy, regarding your challenge, the answer will remain no. Gunther leaves the ring. But then Sammy hits Kaiser with a German suplex flex and a Huluva kick. Gunther still denying Sammy. Sammy keeps on getting more like on fire towards this this pay per view build. Hopefully they will have a match. What do you think? Four twenty somewhere. Four twenty. Um. Four twenty friendly. I think. Why is Sammy Zayn all of a sudden going out there? And telling these, you know, fact people that are in fact like factions, like, hey, this guy doesn't, you know, he might want to leave this group. Like, what? Why? He's like everyone's like, he's like he stirs the pot. Yeah, like, um, he needs to be focused on himself and the world title. But you know, obviously, Gunther's not accepting this challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, it's. It's interesting. I mean, Gunther's – we've never seen Gunther back down from a fight. Mm -hmm. And he's back now from Sami Zayn, of all people. Right. And I, yeah. think, I do think Gunther is – Um. you know, he he, he, he lost against Sami Zayn. I think he's feeling some – you know, maybe, maybe I will lose the title if I – not scared, but like, Almost like, almost like I'd rather be safe than sorry because this guy has beaten me before mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to lose my world title. He's being cautious. He's being smart. Right. So, like, I don't I don't hate it, but at the same time, it's like... He Just be beat him. Insane. Yeah. Like, that was bullshit, like, booking, like, in my opinion, but... I agree. I didn't think he should. But for real, Gunther would beat the shit shit out of Sami Zayn. Mm -hmm. I agree. I totally agree 100% with you. Um, Damian Priest talks backstage and then the world women's champion Liv Morgan interrupts him. Liv calls him a former champion who doesn't realize he's a has-been. Uh, he calls Rhea and Damian two lonely, desperate losers. Damian says, I can't believe someone in the Judgment Day has a set, but when Rhea Ripley gets her hands on you, she's taking them. 
I'm putting your boy down tonight. So both Finn and Liv trying to get in Damian Aria's head tonight. We then have world, well, we have the women's tag team champion Bianca Belair with her partner and champion Jay Cargill taking on EO Sky with Kyrie Sane. And this is a really good match between the two. These two have really good chemistry. They fought many times before, but this is another good match and they're they're uh good match. Saying? But the next time the the next time they lose those belts and none of them turn on each other. I'm done talking about these two. Yeah, it's boring with them. As until, until that happens, I'm done commenting about those two because that's what I want to – that's the only thing that they're worth right now. But that's yes, right, it, it, was, it was a good match. They are good as a tag team. But enough's enough. Give me, yeah. me what – just like Batista said, give me what I want to Triple I, H. Do you give remember? Give me what I want, Triple H. Wasn't there – um? I was saying a funny joke, or no, that was like, um, it was like, be my friend, or like, he says something like that to yeah, Ray. No, it was to Raven, but if you don't, if you remember uh, his promo uh, yeah. against Triple H at WrestleMania 35, Batista's retirement match, he went out there in the promo and was like, Hunter, give me what I want. Give me what I want. <laughs> That's what I'm telling Hunter Triple H right now. That's what he's Give me what I want. Where's the Batista? No, I just, there was a funny meme where like he's like yelling at Ray and he's like, be my oh, friend. You're him. supposed to be my friend or like something like that. I loved it. Um, anyways, I at Bragging Rights 2009. A cool moment during the Bianca EO match. She lifts up EO and like pretty much up the steps and drops her into the ring. EO rolls up Bianca to get the victory here. Um, nothing to talk about, but I guess they deserve a title shot. I guess Theo and Kyrie. We get a promo from American Made. It's silly. They're like representing America, just talking about how they're done with the Wyatt Six. Uh, Ludwig Kaiser says he will expose Sami Zayn next week. He says Sami Zayn has turned on Kevin Owens many times, and he is someone who would do something like that, which is true. Uh, the Judgment Day confront Ilya Dragunov backstage. And they tell him to consider who he calls his friends. So Judgment Day sending a warning to the Mad Dragon, but he's going to take care of things. Him. Oh, uh, our main event: we've got Damian Priest with Rhea Ripley versus Dominic Mysterio with a Judgment Day. Damian gets the win after Rhea attacks Liv Morgan, spearing her over the table. Damian lands the South of Heaven. After the the Judgment Day attack, Damian Priest Liv attacks Rhea. And then Braun Breaker comes out and spears Jay Uso, who tries to make the save. Get out of Jay Uso. Spear the shit out of him. Um, and then after Judgment Day, stand over a destroyed Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. I have a feeling that the mixed tag, Rhea and. Uh, or no, wait, they're not having a mixed tag. Oh my God, that already happened. Um, Very happy, Judgment yeah. Day has just been on top of things the past couple of weeks on Raw. So mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for. Rhea and Damien to get the revenge. What did you think of the closing segment of Raw here tonight? The match and everything. Good closing segment and good match. This could have been a pay per view match in all honesty. Um, yeah, but I like Damien Priest in the big spotlight. I like him being side by side by Rhea Ripley. I just, like I said earlier, I don't want Jey Uso getting too comfortable in this because he needs to be doing other things. But this I was agree. good. I like it. Um, we're just going to have to see the after result um, because without this story, I don't really see what this new quote-unquote judgment day can really bring to the table. So Yeah, they're boring. Street trash, right? Or they're boring as shit. Yeah. Makes no sense. Yeah, well, decent episode of Raw. Like, I like Dominic. I like Dominic. I like Carlito. But, like, it's just they all don't fit together. It makes no sense. Just a random clusterfuck. It's like the trolls are just grouped they together. Fucked up, I think they fucked up the Judgment Day when they when they added JD. Yeah, that's when it kind of got. Yeah, but Carlito, too, though. Carlito has nothing to do with any of them. Like, why? Yeah, he, just, he just makes funny ass shit. But, like, I think the judgment the judgment day was at its all time peak and best when it was 
Damien, Rhea, Finn, and Dominic. Yeah. Obviously. Like, the, like that is when Judgment Day was peak. Was the best. Yeah, I agree. They they've started getting silly when they got R Truth, J D, Carlito. It's kinda like yeah, it's just they, like a random good, buster. Yeah. It became more of like the fucking talk show who's gonna be on this week, you know? Uh-huh. Um, well, decent after the raw, I thought it was much better than SmackDown in my opinion. We'll be covering SmackDown, NXT. Um, yeah, we're excited for Bad Blood, so Until next time, everybody stay safe and stay uncensored.